transmitting high atop of Florida's peninsula at 108 feet. This is Alpha Mike, and you are listening to episode 208. Today's episode is preemption important. Together with my co-host, Kilo Sierra, we will present the argument of preemption and why you need to hear it. As always, how to get in contact with us? It's real easy. All you got to do is is type on your browser, RaiderCop.com, and that will allow you to hear every episode we have from 1 to 208. Or our official website, RaiderCopNation.com, where you can get more information. Hook up with us on social network, everything but Twitter. We're not on the little bird. We have moved on to bigger things. And how do you reach us? By putting RaiderCop, RaiderCop Podcast or Radar Cop Nation. There, you'll find us on the other social media outlets, including Facebook, which still hasn't gotten a double-tap trigger because of the fact that Governor DeSantis, governor of the state of Florida, where we are located, has said there's pow-pow for Facebook in the future. Major League Baseball... Delta Airlines, Coca-Cola, all of them have mental issues. First of all, mental, mental. I should call it mental. Major League Baseball or Mental League Baseball has forgotten that their pastime is to play baseball, not politics. But they have chosen to do so in Georgia because of The election laws that have been passed down there, of course, the left, the Democrats, the leftists, the socialists, the communists, the Bolsheviks, whatever you want to call them, they are pushing the narrative and the needle in the other direction by telling people that this is wrong when that's not the case. So the offense, it's simple. Major League Baseball has said they will move their all-star game to another venue. And as a result, this is a huge mistake because they learn consistently how to piss off a large, if not most, majority of their fan base. Just like basketball and football. Goofballs at their best. But Major League Baseball is not by themselves. They also have Delta Airlines that forgot that their job is to drive airplanes or fly airplanes. Nope, they're into the political business too. So they get the high hard one also. And soon their stock will be diving down along with the sugar water company of the world, Coca-Cola. Another ones that can't figure it out, but they will based on their wallet, the mistakes they're making. We don't fool yourself, folks. This has nothing to do with election laws that just passed, that most of these goofs don't even know what's in it. For example, all these companies have been debunked by conservative radio by showing and indicating how they always have identification to either vote, become part of the board meeting, shareholders meeting, or whatever have you. These people are the total of the hypocrisy spectrum, and the only reason that they are doing this, it's all about power. They think that they're going to be on the top of the game, but they're actually going to be on the bottom of the game for their stupidity. We, as conservatives, need to keep our head on the swivel, paying attention, and when these companies act stupid and forget what they actually are supposed to do and sell, we need to remind them by not buying. Up next, the Word of God to stimulate your mind. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have 
eternal life. John chapter 3, verse 14 and 15. As always, you can hear much more, about 30 minutes or less of what I've read on AWOL Monday or AWOL. It is a, a, you can find it on RaiderCopNation.com. There's a section up there that you'll see that says AWOL on it. Click it and you can hear this and plus much more. As I've always said, you can't go into battle just with tactical support and knowledge. You also need the spiritual realm or else you're half that person. And we want you to be a full-fledged individual in the fight. Today, I am honored to have my co-host, Kilo Sierra, on the air with me. We're going to tackle on this subject of preemption. And I want to tell the audience that my co-host is just not any ordinary co-host. You see, he recently sent me a text and told me, basically, kind of doing his scheduling. You see, he's on the big screen in Hollywood now. He's a very talented and famous movie star. That's right, Kilo Sierra, overnight, and... Uh, He's still humble, still remembers where he came from, and still remembers he's on Raider Cop Nation, and we're grateful to have him. But today, we're going to have uh, a little bit more of a co-host. So if you got your sporting sunglasses, put them on, rock back with your favorite beverage, because the one and only Kilo Sierra will be here to tackle Episode 208, is preemption important? That's the question that we are sending to you today, our audience. Without any further ado, oh, let me just say this before I click. You know, he's got his own intro, but we're still working on the Hollywood celebrity intro. There's going to be a lot more fancier than this one but nevertheless while we working on these little red carpet issues Kilo Sierra And as promised, here he is. Now, he's not only our co-host, he's also our famous co-host because he's a movie celebrity. He'll explain <laughs> it himself, but we are blessed to have the famous and infamous movie star, Kilo Sierra, amongst our midst. Thank you for being here, sir. Why, thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, so... Uh... Yeah, so thank you for the compliment. Uh, yeah, I have a small part in a uh, upcoming horror movie, uh, and probably coming out in the fall. Uh, but it, it was a lot of fun filming. But that's all I can say right now. And uh, as soon as the movie, uh, it, the closer its release date, I'll definitely give you more details and all that. So it'll be a good time. It'll be fun. We're looking forward to it. The audience will be with pen and paper in hand for autographs. <laughs> Robert De Niro. Who cares about these actors? We've got Kilo Sierra. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and he's with us today on on uh, this episode on preemption. We're talking about state laws on basically that trumps everything else. <gasps> and, and when I mean Trump, I mean it's bigger and higher than. You know, you got to be careful when you use the word Trump. It does <laughs> trigger certain yes. people out there yes. they think you're talking about something else right and in this case uh the preemption and what exactly is it and that's what we want to discuss today yes yeah preemption it's a it's one of these slippery slopes where the state has one specific gun law uh, but then a local township might have a different local ordinance that they try to circumvent 
the existing gun law or make it more restrictive. Uh, and the problem is that sometimes, depending on, on the townships, they could be so subtle, or you might you might not know that law. That let's say you get in trouble for it, um, uh, and, and all of a sudden you have to go to court. Well, now the debate is okay. Which which law circumvents the other one? Is it the state law or the local uh, ordinance law? Like uh, for example, in certain townships, you can carry at a bar as long as you don't drink. Uh, but all the townships, you cannot uh, carry a gun that serves alcohol. Right. Uh, so it all depends. And also, another classic example that's uh, the, what I consider the extreme is that you have the state of New York, where you have uh, upstate New York has a set of gun laws, but the boroughs have a totally different set of gun laws. I mean, we're talking about apples and oranges. Right. And, so, and, and that, again, that makes mm-hmm. it so confusing mm-hmm. for the law-abiding citizen to carry a gun because you literally have to be walking around with a legal book, what you're allowed to do here versus over there. Sure, sure. It, it, it's really, it's really confusing. And, and the issue also is that even if uh, you know, if you look at if you look at the laws online, they could be outdated. So you got to be really careful to confirm what y- your laws are, especially your local ordinances, because because sometimes it takes a while for the information to update online. Too. Right. And and you also, it, it, this is more scary of the preemption issue because you're talking about townships. So it's not something that you you might not live in that township, right? Or that right, municipality. Right, right. And all of a sudden there you are and, whoa, you can't have a gun in a park, not here, in a city park or a township park. And you don't know this. So it becomes a little more confusing as well. And then you've got to be looking up township ordinances, totally different animal. Yeah. And, and, if they, and the reason why, especially for new gun owners, is that they don't expect it because they assume if they have a carrying permit or, and, and, and as long as you're within your own state, then you're good. And that's not necessarily the case. Right. Because yeah, most people deal with that with other, if they have, if they travel to other states, they are, then they know, then they're more proactive. Well, what are the state laws of another state? But people don't think that within their own state that could be differences that could jam them up. Yeah, the the you said a, a an excellent word and and you said subtle, and and you hit that right on the on the head that some of these laws are so subtle, so. So on the on the borderline that it's difficult to even analyze it that you might be violating it. Sure, sure. Um, I know in Philadelphia, in Pennsylvania, there are different gun laws and ordinances in Philadelphia yeah. uh, regarding the rest of the state. So th- these exist, and it's and, and it's up to the uh, the gun owner to to make sure that they understand the, the, the laws because it's you wouldn't think that within your own state there could be such subtle differences that could, could cause legal problems. That's it's, it's shocking for most people that, that, that it's within their own state. There could be problems. Now, in, in my humble opinion, I think that a lot of these laws and these preemption laws that pop up out of nowhere usually are on the left side of the aisle. Yes. Politically. Why do you think that they constantly or, or consistently do this? They, uh, individuals uh, on the left side of the persuasion politically, uh, want to inhibit uh, uh, any type of gun rights, want to uh, circumvent any existing state law that they think might not be enough. And it's a constant battle to make uh, gun possession more restrictive. So what they can grab at, especially uh, at certain towns and ordinances that might be uh, more left wing in their thinking politically, they, they, they're going to try to get away with trying to make slightly more restrictive gun laws. And that's where lawsuits come up. And that's what it's important for individuals to, to residing in that state where if they think their rights are being infringed and they're being circumvented and say they have to understand it. Wait, wait a second. State law delineates this. How can, is it legal for an ordinance to make it more restrictive? Yeah, yeah, and and that that's where attorneys come into play, and and the NRA and other uh, organizations that fight for gun rights, because some of these ordinances make absolutely no sense whatsoever. Right, they make no sense right. o- only to a leftist. 
right. Does that make right, sense? Right. Like, yeah. for example, if you lived in some of the boroughs in New York, uh, you cannot take your gun and shoot in Long Island. You have to stay in the boroughs. Yeah. You know, things like that that you wouldn't you would know. And then all of a sudden, crazy. You, you know, you, and you move into that township. But wait a second. So it's 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 crazy. And they purposefully I, I think they also purposefully try to keep it hush hush because they, they don't, they're trying to prohibit by any means necessary gun ownership or any uh, type of method of carry. Because, of course, in many ordinances, you can't carry in their town. It's 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 lunacy. It's crazy. Yeah, it's the, the concept is make it difficult to carry. Yes. So the gun owners are become so frustrated that, you know what, I'm just not going to carry anymore. Right. I'll just leave it at home and carry a slingshot or something. <laughs> and slingshots you, you, are illegal in New Jersey. Did you know that? What? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. you got to be kidding yeah. me. Yes, they are. Slingshots are illegal in New Jersey. Yes. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how you do it. <laughs> I, it, it, it doesn't make any, and they've been illegal for years. That that's nothing new. That's wow. nothing new. Yeah. So like wrist rockets and all that, they're not allowed by by by. You cannot own one in New Jersey. Yeah. So in Florida, you can literally own a tank and drive it down the block as long as you have a license plate on it. And just make sure you put turning signals on it. Right? <laughs> 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 it's crazy. Yes. <laughs> so the left's position, make it difficult. And as we said, with a lot of these statutes they do, it's uh, the the adage of throw cock on the wall right. and see if it sticks. See if it sticks. Right. And that's yeah. where it's incumbent on the gun owners and, and all these organizations to file lawsuits. Uh, because it, it's bit, little by little, they try to infringe on our rights. And, that, and, and that's that's not good. And it's sometimes yeah. it's subtle. So that, that, it is. It's not, yeah. It is subtle. Definitely. Now, the issue with how do I, how would you, let, let's take a look at how we're going to tell our audience to keep up with all these issues as far as following preemption laws in townships and so forth. It can become overwhelming. Sure. The, the some of the recom, uh, one I one thing I always recommend, like I indicated before, sometimes information online is outdated, and you want to make sure you get the latest information. The easiest thing thing that I've done is call the local police department and tell them, listen, I'm going to be visiting your area or I reside in your area and whatever. I just want to make sure that I am following the gun laws of the not only the state but the township and. Uh, nine times out of ten, they'll more than be they'll be more than happy to explain what you can and can't do, and that's the latest information. Is, is calling right. the local police department and just asking them, or, or where, or where, where can I get information, or who can I speak with uh, regarding the, the the local township ordinance. And that might be intimidating for some of the audience. I don't really want to call the cops and you know make them believe something, and you know, unfortunately, may be the truth. Some Body might answer the phone and has no idea. Oh, granted. <laughs> so. oh, oh, no, absolutely. No, and and that, that's a, that, that happens as well. Sometimes you have arrests when the, in certain states and the firearm is legal, but the law enforcement officer didn't realize that. No, you, you, absolutely. So you would ask him, do you have a firearms unit or, or is an individual that I can speak with? I just want to make sure that. And you, you, you pose it that way. I just want to make sure I'm doing the right thing. Right. And yeah, like, I mean, okay. especially if they have a firearms unit or something, right. they're much more knowledgeable in that area. Sure. And I think you also want to network with uh, gun clubs. If you go shooting yes. or practice in your community, yes, find out if there's a gun club. And another thing that they can also do is maybe get it, uh, involved with an association, uh, NRA, uh, USCCA, uh, yes. Gun clubs, uh, gun gun owners of America, something like that. Sure, that. sure, sure. It's a, but it's important to be informed and, and 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 take an active role in finding out, just to be on the safe side. Yeah. Because it's you just don't know, and uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, ignorance is no defense in the law. And then you you you, you make a mistake, an innocent mistake, that you of course logically doesn't make any sense, but the local ordinance is different than the state law and but yeah definitely clubs are another great source in any uh, gun clubs or things like that definitely. yeah it it, it 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 behooves you to become a part of something 
And, yes. And something that will educate you through the process and stuff, especially if you're a new gun owner. So networking with other gun owners in your community through maybe a, a shooting range or so forth goes a long way. Oh, most definitely. And, and not only that, you, you, you also help supporting our gun rights. And with many of these clubs and associations, you'll get uh, newsletters or emails that will keep you up to date with the, the local laws, uh, whether it's local, county, state, or federal. Yeah. And, and you're up to date. And that's definitely, and, and it's a good networking tool as well. Yeah, it definitely goes a long way. And uh, even if you're you know, been in that community for 40 years and I, yeah, you know, I know the local cops and all that. Hey, it's always best. You'd never know anything can happen and you want to be on the no, not the, I don't know list. Mm -hmm. Right. Things change. Things change again. And you, you haven't kept up to date for a couple of years. And all of a sudden you don't realize that what you've been doing all this time is now illegal. Yeah, uh, and, and and all of a sudden you're caught with your pants down and not, you don't realize it because it doesn't make any sense to you. But it's just because of the the current political climate that things change. Yeah. And and, 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 and it behooves you to to keep up with the law. Definitely. And it's sad that we have to live in in a world like this uh, because it, it shouldn't. It shouldn't be. Of course not. We're law abiding individuals. We're gun gun enthusiasts, and uh, we 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 love what we do, and we love our hobbies and our interests. But it's unfortunately that we have just a huge political climate that we have to constantly fight off. That are that consistently want to take away our gun rights, whether at the local or federal level. And, and and it's incumbent on us to make sure that we know what the laws are, and then we we fight to preserve what we have. Right. Because we. Because it's 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 a it's a right that we have. Yeah, and and being a gun owner is a huge responsibility. It's not just you know placing the gun on your person and going out and becoming Clint Eastwood. A lot of responsibilities <laughs> go with it. And sure. Gun absolutely. safety, gun travel safety, everything. Sure, sure, yeah, and, and it's incumbent on the individual to 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 be responsible. Uh, gun owners, not not only is it a huge responsibility. But you, 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 you want to convey that, that, that sense of, of, of being responsible and, and, and not have the, the media, you know, they want to portray gun owners as, as crazy and aggressive. And that is not the case at all. But they want to, they want to stereotype us. So yeah. it's, it's also, the, aside from the legal implications, also the image. You yeah. have to show people that we are, we are law-abiding citizens, we're, we're patriots, and that we, we, and, and the stereotype is wrong. Yeah, the stereotype is big time in today's political circle. It's They want to know what side of the aisle you're on, what color you are, what right. gender you are. And right. uh, if you're carrying a gun, uh, obviously that's a big problem too. So our right. level of responsibility is much, much higher. And I know for a fact that um, people on both sides of the political spectrum are buying guns now. Oh yes, that, yes. Uh, that, that's an absolute fact, and I know, and and some of the left, more of the left leaning factions are a little concerned about that because now you have people on both sides of the political aisle purchasing firearms and yep. wanting training. Yeah, and, and and you know what's scary about it is that you know Barack Obama and Joe Biden are probably the best gun salesmen that this country's ever had. <laughs> yes, because every yes. time they say something, the people run out and buy and purchase double what they have yep that's why it's so hard to get ammo now it's so hard to get firearms now and my biggest or i have i've been training with firearms for a long time yeah and never have i been so busy as with as within the past year wow never never i it, it's it's every i can guarantee when i go back to my emails this afternoon that i'm going to get four or five requests for firearms training it's, it's which is a good awesome. thing for you yes yeah. Absolutely, because um, I mean, not, obviously, it's it's good for business. However, what I really like about the fact, and I always compliment my new students, is that I compliment them, telling them that I am so glad that you purchased the firearm, but that you sought to seek more training with it. Yes, 
And that's huge. And I compliment them on that because I, as you and I know, how many times have we been to a range and then I've had to stop what I'm doing. And mind you, the individual that I have to address isn't even one of my students, but that they were doing something unsafe. Mm hmm. And and and, it, and it's why it's I really commend the student my new students when they when they take a class because they're doing the right thing they're starting immediately with good habits. Yeah, and good habits go a long way. Gun safety is number one, and yes. once you have those that foundation, it never never erased in the person's mind. It will always be there. Absolutely, absolutely, and, and it's ingrained. It, it becomes a safety. Pro what I call. I, I call it a safety protocol. Yeah. And and I teach that from, from the young kids. That's for the safety protocol. And my daughter was really young when she started shooting, and she's never forgotten the safety protocol. And keep the firearm put in a safe direction. Keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready to fire. Keep the gun loaded until you're ready to, until you're ready to shoot. The basics, that's something. Those, these are the core safety uh, uh, values that are just ingrained in her. And then th those are the same things that, as professionals, we have to try to ingrain to new shooters. Yeah. And uh, why don't we give uh, your uh, your firearm class, uh, course a little plug. Tell the audience. Sure. Sure, sure. I teach a number of firearms classes. Um, I do. Uh, uh, it's a basic introductory pistol class that I hold. It's about three and a half hours long. And we go over the basic nomenclatures of semi-automatics and revolvers. Then I have another class. Uh, I teach it. Uh, the NRA ones as well, the basic pistol and, de and defensive pistol, that's from the holster. Then what I do is once it, uh, my students have taken those types of classes, whether with me or whether with another individual, uh, I have a, a, a course that I call practical shooting series. I, my friend, I have a friend of mine, Ryan Chin from Level Up Tactical. We both teach it. And it's a, a course in which combines both the holstered pistol and a, a rifle. So we do uh, moving and shooting, uh, re reloading drills, transition drills, just to get the, the newer shooter accustomed to doing a couple of things at once, uh, going from the handgun to the rifle, then back to the handgun. And that's called the Practical Shooting Series. It's, it's all on Facebook. If anybody can send me an email, www.sepulvedainc.com, and I'll gladly give you some more information. Well, you heard it here. I highly recommend it. Kilo Sierra is very knowledgeable, and you cannot go wrong. You heard it here. Thank you. Thank and, uh, you. We're going to post everything you said down on the bottom of the show notes, and uh, in case you couldn't write it down because you were driving or whatever, so don't panic. Got it right <laughs> down on the bottom of the show notes. Awesome. awesome. Any, any closing that. remarks on uh, preemption? The, just that uh, have, I want, especially the shooters, do your homework, do your research. Do not assume that all state law, even though it should be applicable to every township in whatever state you reside in, it might not be. So just do your homework, ask the gun clubs, talk to the police departments, just be educated uh, and make sure that you know what the current laws are, uh, not only in your state, but within your county and your township. There you go. You've heard it here. We have, are always blessed to have Kilo Sierra amongst our ranks, giving us super knowledge. Thank you again, my friend. Thank you so much, my friend. Have a great day. Our famous co-host, movie star, Kilo Sierra, bringing us knowledge on is the subject of preemption important? And we have answered that in the affirmative. It is important for you to know the do and don'ts as things change ever always evolving and revolving as the White House creates more control, more restrictions on America. A lot of states in these Republican states are countering that with their own laws, regulations, and protecting our gun rights. So this is the time to stay educated, stay positive, and keep your head on the swivel. Nobody likes to be neutered, and that's what the government is doing to us today. Neutering us, not allowing us to be free Americans, and we don't like it. It's always great to have Kilo Sierra on. 
we are very blessed to have him, and, and I really appreciate what he does. All right, what's up next for Raider Cop Podcast? Well, a little break from the gun issues, and we're going to jump into the Wise Guys series, episode 209, Organized Crime Control Act. And we're going to discuss that a little bit. Remember, we're still on the Outlaw series, but we're going to go ahead and feature this because right when we finish the Outlaws, I believe we have uh, two or three more to go. I'm going to jump right back in to Colstra and Ulstra, and we're going to probably uh, continue with our visit with the Lucchese crime family. So up next, 209 is going to be April 10th, and that's going to be the Organized Crime Control Act. And April 14th, we've got Kilo Sierra, the movie star himself. Get your sunglasses on. He will be with us on April 14th, day before tax day. And that is episode 210, which is going to be reciprocity. And we're going to discuss what you should know. Very important. Knowledge is power. And we have to stay powerful at all times on the issue of gun control and I'll close uh, with these statements it is a nutty time we are still in shell shock over what occurred in the election we're still trying to gather our thoughts on surviving four years of this train wreck we're still acknowledging the fact that troubled times are coming, such as higher taxes, more leftist laws and control, gun control, and everything else you can come up with, uh, the foolishness that's coming our way. The left has dreamed about this era that we're all living through, this nightmare, for more than 80 years. And it's evident that they can't control themselves because what they're doing is just nasty. And most, if not all of it, is just preposterous. And it's turning off a lot of Democrats. And so my calling is for a lot of Democrats and liberal Democrats that really don't stand for this. You know, I've always said, and I'll continue to say, there's a huge distinction between a liberal and a leftist. A leftist wants to control you and control the production lines, where a liberal wants to make everything fair and equitable. And I think conservatives have done an injustice in mixing the two consistently whenever they open their mouth and talk. In this battle, if you cannot clearly identify who the enemy is, how can you win? There is an easy, quick, and simple distinction between a leftist and a liberal, and I believe that at the end, many, many liberals will stand up and say, enough is enough. Now, conservatives are conservative even to stand up and fight. And that has to go away, too. Even when we look on these runaway, renegade corporations that have to go out of the production line of what they do, and they have to make stupid statements to fit the narrative on the news and to appease the communist left. And that's what it's all about. Don't let anybody fool you that the president of Delta or Coca-Cola in looking at the law in Georgia have decided that it is not fair for all. That's a bunch of baloney. And the reason the evidence is right there. They have systems in their own corporations that deal with ID and identification and everything else. And it's hypocritical to say that if we had a voting system with ID, It would be racist. This is absurd, preposterous, and ridiculous. But it's part of the game. And we, as consumers, we have to turn off the switch on companies like Delta, Coca-Cola, 
and Major League Baseball. Am I an advocate of that? No, but in times that are tough, tough people have to emerge. And if you got $3 in your pocket, I wouldn't be breaking two of those to give them the Delta. Why? Because you're just advocating for the left. So, but, but you don't understand, Alfred. The ticket's $3 more over at American. Oh, well, sucks to be you. Suck it up. And that's how they'll get the point across. So the more of us that turn all wallets upside down, inside out, and we don't give them a dollar, that's uh, not going to please a lot of shareholders and the CEO's going to get booted out. As a result, we will win. Don't let the communists fool you. Capitalism still drives the needle, and it is the driving force on a lot of issues. So, as always, it is my honor and pleasure to be your host on Radio Cop Podcast. Continue to pray for yourself, because without you in the game, we have nothing. Continue to pray for your family, your friends, your community, and the law enforcement agency that serves you. And most importantly, the United States of America. This is Alpha Mike, and I'm out.